The CDC is expected to sign off on another COVID-19 booster shot for seniors and people with weak immune systems today. The FDA approved the updated guidance yesterday. Regulators also say all Americans getting doses of Pfizer or Moderna will start receiving the newest formula that protects against the Omicron variant. Here for further analysis is Dr. Mati Slashawayo davis She's the Director of Health for the City of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Dr. Slashawayo, thanks so much for joining us. You are the Director of Health for the city of St. Louis, Missouri. Welcome. Thank you. So uh, let's explain uh, Let's explain this vaccine guidance and why it's significant. Well, it's significant because as we're transitioning from a pan, from a pandemic to an endemic state, it's still important for us to understand what cadence we should be getting boosters and who they're more important for. The FDA is making it very clear here that COVID is not gone. It will always be with us. And so trying to really help us prioritize how and when we should be getting boosters. This is fantastic news coming out for um, especially the most uh, risk prone amongst us, those being the elderly and immunocompromised. Also, this, this booster will help to protect against a wide variety of, of the most significant variants, um, which should which will add increased immunity. So not only is COVID still with us, but we have a new subvariant. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this properly, but I think it's called the Arcturus. What do we know about this? So, you know, to me, I, I wanted to come on today to really help as an infectious disease physician also make people comfortable with viruses are doing what viruses do. Mm. COVID always has subvariants, right? So this should not be a red alert shock every time this happens. This is an innate part of their biology. Um, they will always make um, variants. Unfortunately, we never reached herd immunity in the United States, right? So we're going to be living with COVID much like we do with influenza, where there's different variants um, that we have to protect against. So this new variant coming out of India is one that we are watching, but not yet designated as a variant of concern, meaning we do not have it causing predominant disease as of yet, but the CDC and the federal government doing the right thing and letting us know we're keeping our eyes on this one. So there are uh, reports of this, uh, uh, these new symptoms with this subvariant that hasn't been seen before, um, including conjunctivitis. Uh, how does conjunctivitis fit into this new subvariant? Yeah, and this is why it's important to think about these symptoms in the overall category of this being a, a variant that we're watching, but not yet a variant of concern, which means a lot of that is even collecting data to make sure the symptomology is not just um, associated with, but actually causally related to. Meaning we know with a high degree of certainty that conjunctivitis and some of these new symptoms are all a part of this new variant. Having said that, again, this is all a natural part of Darwinism, right? As things mutate, they may infer new symptomology as well. So it'll be important to see, again, is this causal or is it just associated in a few cases, um, this conjunctivitis? And more importantly, it will take time to see um, what that looks like in the long term and to what extent. Conjunctivitis can come across a very wide spectrum, very mild symptoms all the way to something that can be very concerning. So this is something that we'll keep an eye on. Um, so you're, you're going to be like, <laughs> you're trying to make sure that we're all very level-headed about this. And I have yet another question about this subvariant. <laughs> Um, so be patient with us. Uh, the World <laughs> Health Organization. That's what we should be doing, right? Okay. This is exactly the kind of conversation that's warranted. Okay, so good. you're doing fantastic. <laughs> okay, good. Because I didn't want to be making a big deal out of something that's, you know, no, maybe not that questions. big of a deal. People are going to have questions. Um, that's right. So the World, questions. the World Health Organization has designated this new subvariant as a variant under monitoring. I think, I think that's what you mentioned. Um, what's the difference between this designation and others, such as variants of concern? That's a really great question. So a variant under monitoring means they've had enough clusters of cases um, that, of concern, either around how fast it gets spread or as well in this case, around some new symptomology, that they're watching it, right? They're monitoring. They, they're putting our best minds and our folks around epidemiology, around public health, around medicine, to really see um, to what degree this may become of concern. A variant of concern, however, is one that has shown itself to cause predominant disease um, under one of a few categories, either transmission 
or it may not spread as fast, but it causes severe disease. Um, so we'll be looking to see if it does progress to that extent. But again, right now, they are monitoring. So uh, let's talk about this. Earlier uh, this month, President Biden signed a bill that ended the COVID national emergency a month earlier than initially planned. Uh, did you agree with that decision? Um, so agreeing, you know, this is more of a political decision, right? Mm. Signing a piece of paper from an infectious diseases standpoint doesn't stop diseases or viruses from doing what they're going to do. So for us, we appreciated the forewarning around what impact this actually has, right? And I think that's what's important, putting my director of health hat on, is making sure that the public understands what a lifting of an emergency is. It's not just someone telling you that a pandemic is over because no, it's not a light switch. We can't just turn it off and on. But what it do does do is have implications on your ability to get testing, treatment, um, and actually long-term um, issues around Medicaid uh, enrollment and even availability. So in the short term, no big changes, right? You're still going to be able to get testing. The government has made sure that there's enough testing available for folks to still have access for free. Um, treatment is the same. But what it does signal to us is that unless Congress continues to see this as a priority, funds may dry up in the future and we may not have the same freedoms and accessibility that we've always enjoyed throughout this pandemic for testing and treatment. In the short term, it does have some nuance around um, insurance, um, specifically Medicaid, that public health departments are working really hard to educate the public about right now. All right, Dr. Matty Slashwayo Davis, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.